Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Robert with oddrandomthoughts.com and I'm bringing you the second video in our Adobe Illustrator CS6 uh, tutorial series on uh, ways and methods uh, to color separating for screen printing. Um, the first video we talked about how to create a template, one that you can use over and over uh, to size your artwork with and um, to separate your your colors into separate plates for screen output. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to create a swatch library. Now having a swatch library is very important when you're uh, doing color separations because uh, you don't want to have to create um, colors every time you need one. Not only that, but uh, you want to have a, a library that has all the colors in it that uh, either your your print shop or there at your home, whatever colors you have available to you, you want to be able to color your artwork with these swatches to match. So um, now that's not going to make any difference as far as screen output goes, but it's, it's good to have uh, at least similar swatches uh, so you can recognize what colors you're dealing with when you're separating the artwork. So uh, first thing we want to do, uh, let's go ahead and make an, open a new document. We'll just go to File and New. Now uh, these presets, uh, none of this is going to matter as far as creating a swatch library because we're not uh, going to be doing anything on the artboard. So whatever's there is fine. Just click OK. And then uh, let's go ahead and wipe this uh, palette clean here. So we'll select All Unused and hit Yes to delete and we'll select all of these as well and we'll go ahead and delete those out. Okay, so uh, all we have left is our registration and our none fill. So let's go ahead and start our swatches. Uh, we'll come down here to the button for uh, adding a new swatch. We'll click on that and we'll just uh, start off with black. That's a very common color. Now be sure uh, that your color type is set to spot color and your mode is CMYK because that's uh, that's the standards for any print job, especially screen printing, is that uh, you, and when you're doing color separations, you need to be using spot colors. Uh, so we'll make that one 100% black, and just click OK, it'll pop it in your library. Then let's go ahead and make another one. Uh, this one we'll call brown. And we'll give it a CMYK of 38, 56, 87, and 37. Okay, so we've got two in there. Let's go ahead and make one more. Uh, this one, we'll just call it, uh, how about flesh? That's a good color. And we'll do 8, 24, 31, and 12. So there's our flesh colored swatch. And then uh, we'll do one more. We'll go ahead and make a royal, uh, a nice blue is always good. So we'll do 175, zero, and zero. Okay, so um, probably when you're making your swatch libraries, you will have multiple colors. Uh, I'm sure probably quite a few more than, than what we've done here, but this will be plenty uh, for our demonstration here. Uh, you would just repeat those steps in order to add more to your library. So now that you've done that, uh, go down here to the bottom and go up to Save Swatches, and then we will give our library a name. We'll call it New Library and hit save. Now you can name this anything you want, whatever you need in order to recognize it later. Uh, you can see I have several swatches here already. Um, just be sure that when you save your library, uh, you save it in this default spot, wherever it opens the box to save those swatches, that's where you want to save them. Otherwise you won't be able to access them later. Uh, so go ahead and hit save. <clears throat> then. Uh, we can go ahead and take all of these out and I'll show you how to get to your swatches. Okay, so now that you have your library created, uh, go back down here to the menu, go to User Defined, and then we'll pick the library we just created. 
Okay, so it should pop up in a little box like this for you. Uh, what I like to do is uh, grab the label here and drag it over to my my tools and uh, add it into uh, the bar here so it's easily accessible and I, I always have it up. And then I'll go up here uh, to the options and do a small list view on it. So that allows me to see the name of the color as well as the swatch so I can find what I'm looking for a lot easier. Now when there's a whole bunch of these in your library, it, you can scroll through them real easy. Uh, the, the scroll is real fast, so you can go through a whole ton of them real quick and find what you're looking for. Uh, so the neat thing about having your library here is, uh, let's say you have a piece of artwork here. Well, you don't have a swatch in your document uh, board here. So if you wanted to keep the royal, uh, you could click on it, and now that royal is colored with that swatch. You can see it added it to your, your document library automatically. Uh, let's say that uh, we wanted to create another box, but uh, we want to color that one brown. So if we click in our library to brown, it will add that swatch automatically to your document library, and it colors the selected object as well. So that's, that's the, the big bonus to having a swatch library. You can just pick your colors real quick and it'll automatically add them to your, your document library that you're working on. Um, so it's, it's really a lifesaver. Uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, <clears throat> I would like to add that you can also make uh, pattern swatches. Uh, we can do that real easily here real quick. I'll show you. Um, now you can make these uh, pattern swatches anything you like, uh, just uh, copy and fill whatever you're working with, um, but we'll make this a perfect square, okay? Then let's drag this over and we'll make a, one that's blue and we'll copy another one over there and one of these as well. So uh, now we can bring up our line tool and go ahead and pop those together and we'll group those and then we'll group these and then we'll put those together. Okay, so uh, if you want you can come up here and merge those uh, so they all become one piece and then uh, to make your pattern swatch just go up here to object to pattern and make just click OK, and this is showing you what your swatch will be. And as you see, it's added it to your library. Now, I like to have uh, separate libraries for uh, patterns, uh, garment swatches, ink swatches. I like to have separate libraries for all of that stuff. And you can add them up here to your panel and just uh, go between them and pick what you want for whatever you're working on. Uh, but it'll also pop up this options panel. <clears throat> you can play with this and uh, see what all you can do with your pattern swatches depending on what kind of pattern you're making. Uh, we won't get into any great detail uh, for this tutorial on using these options, but uh, play around with that. There's some, some cool features in there. You can really do a lot with some patterns. So uh, just go ahead and click Done. Now that you have, uh, we'll delete that. Now that you have your pattern swatch, uh, let's say we've got another box and we want to color it with our pattern. So just click on your swatch and uh, then it has colored your selected object with that swatch. And if we resize that object, it will continue to hold that pattern. So there you go. That's uh, how to create a swatch library in an Adobe Illustrator CS6. And uh, we also touched on making uh, a simple pattern swatch and um, how to save them and how to access them later so you should be ready to go now uh, you've got your template made you've now you've made your swatch library so you're all set up and ready to do some color separation so we'll dive into that um, in the next video I uh, hope you've enjoyed this one and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below and remember, if you like the strange and unusual, 
or any topic out of the ordinary, then visit the website at oddrandomthoughts.com. Thank you, and y'all have a great day.